Hi, it's Phil here from Revive My Ride and today's an exciting day because I'm going to do three things that will dramatically improve the looks of my BMW Z4M. The first thing I've got is a set of second hand but practically as new CSL replica wheels with tyres. And here's how they compare against the current wheels. The CSL reps are 19 inch wheels and the existing ones are 18 and that increase in alloy wheel size is going to look a lot better. Next I've got a pair of Bimec 20mm spacers and the bolts to go with them for the rear of the car. And the purpose of these spacers is to push those alloy wheels out a bit wider and really make them fill the arches. And so if we move around to the side, you can see how far inset that wheel is. And so the new wheels are going to sit level here with the edge of the arch. It's going to look good guys. And the third thing that I've got is the IBAC Pro Kit lowering springs. This is a very modest lower on the Z4M, so it's 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch on the front and 10 millimeters or about three eighths of an inch on the back. Now that might seem like next to nothing, but remember the Z4M already has lowered suspension as standard. Even this modest lowering amount is going to make a big difference to how the car looks. And remember, we want to make sure the car handles well at the end of it as well. Okay, so let's make a start on the rear of the car. And the first thing I'm going to do is crack loose those wheel nuts before I jack up the car. That way they come off easily once I'm on the axle stands. And to stop the car rolling away, I'm going to put some chocks in front of the front wheels. Remember, this is a rear wheel drive car and obviously the handbrake's on the rear as well. So there's nothing to stop it rolling when I'm jacking it up. I previously did a step-by-step -step video how to jack up your car and get it onto axle stands. So see the description for the link if you're interested. I just get an axle stand under this side. Safety first. There we go. And I'll just put an axle stand at the other side too. And that will free up my jack to use uh, for the spring job. Go ahead and lower that jack down now carefully and let the axle stands take the weight. Okay, so now I can go ahead and get the wheels off. Just get my friend WD40 on the job. There you go, that should be enough. Then we'll get a breaker bar in and let it do the heavy lifting for us. And then we can get a ratchet in. These little uh, bottle jacks are just cheap as chips and they come in super handy. Yeah, so if you don't have one in your garage, then you should do. Come in handy for all sorts. And hopefully that'll just take the tension off of that spring. And look at that, the old uh, rear spring was broken, but it was just sitting in place still. But this should just drop out now. And it did. Love it when a plan comes together. Sorry guys, this is just a bit of extra points. Well, I'm a bit fastidious. I don't like stuff like that, you know. I don't want to put that platform back on there and it potentially be uneven, you know. And this is the bottom one, so I'm just going to pop it back onto the spring. I'm just going to pop that top one on. Looks good. Now we can just feed that new spring back in. You have to feed it onto the top first because it goes onto that. Let's call it a knobble. So get it onto the knobble. Okay, it's just going nice and slow. Oop, there we go. Oh, right, so I'm just going to get my big head in there and have a good look. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Get the shock absorber bottom bolt back in and tightened up. Now let's get our spacer fitted. This hub's not too bad. Doesn't do any harm to give it a quick wire brushing. Get that wheel on nice and square. Got some brake cleaner. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of copper grease on the back of there. That's good. And now I can finally get the new wheel on and I'm getting the wheel bolts in hand tight at this stage until the wheel's back on the ground. I did the other rear spring in exactly the same way and this is what the car looks like now. Okay, so now it's time to turn our attention to the front springs. When I'm uh, jacking up the front, I like to jack on the cross member underneath because the car's a little bit low. Sometimes I have to lift it a little bit. It's <laughs> been worse once I've lowered it. Okay, so I'm just going to jack underneath the suspension arm where it meets the hub. And this is to take the uh, load off of the top nut for the shock absorber, which is uh, up above in the engine bay. And just before I take that top nut off, it's worth showing you that that gap underneath means there's no tension on the spring, obviously with the jack underneath. And now that tyre bar will just move out of the way. You just need to push it down, move that off to one side. 
And next you'll just need to uh, pop the ABS sensor wire and the flexible for the brakes free from this bracket. There's a couple of nuts at the bottom, one either side and one at the top, but we're going to start with the lower ones first. And you'll notice I've got the wheel turned so I can get the strong bar in. Speaking of which, here it is. Oops, no, that's not good is it? Almost forgot, in fact I did forget. You need the jack underneath to support the underneath of the wishbone arm, otherwise when you try to undo the knot then it'll just keep bouncing. But now it should be easy peasy. There we go. Just undoing the bolt at the other side in exactly the same way. So we're ready to get to this last nut, which is at the top here. That was a tight one, wasn't it? Hence the breaker bar. So now we need to punch that bolt out. So I'm just going to put that against the end. And then I've got quite a hefty hammer here. But before I punch that out the rest of the way, what I'm going to do is just drop this hub down uh, because it's still supported slightly by the jack. Now you can see there's no tension on that spring. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to rotate it like that. So I just have a rubber mallet because I don't want to damage anything. And with a bit of careful manipulation, you'll be able to remove this um, strut. There we go. Okay, so that's the strut removed and there's nothing holding that spring on now. So I'll just show you how you change the spring. So the existing top mount just lifts off easily. And now the spring itself just lifts right off the top, he says. You'll feel it locate. Okay, so that's ready to go. So the easiest way to get this strut back in is to lift it up into the top mount. And you're best feeding it in from the front of the hub because there's wires at the back that get in the way. So that's everything in place. So now it's just a case of uh, jacking it up until you can see enough of the shaft coming through at the top that you can get the nut on. Soon as you're able to, it's worth getting that top nut on because that means the strut won't fall back down again now. And it's fine like that for now because we've got those bolts underneath to concentrate on. And it should be possible to get this bolt in that we removed earlier. There we go, it's almost like a knot I'm doing, kind of. And then we'll just put the nut on the other side. You can just put a little bit of Loctite on that. Again, just finger tight for now, because we're gonna uh, get the other one in. So I'm just gonna reach around the other side and put the other bolt in. And now all the bolts are in finger tight, we can go back with our ratchet and nip them all up. And just the same at the other side. And we've got this tie bar to put back on. There we go. <coughs> nice and tight. Yeah, and just make sure you don't forget about these um, hoses and wires that we unfastened earlier. There we go. Yeah, now all we have to do is nip that up with the tools we were using earlier. Yeah, and then just fit the front spring on the other side in exactly the same way. Okay, so it's time to get out for a drive. For two reasons, really. The first is that the suspension really needs to settle down after you've done, um, you know, any kind of suspension works, whether it's uh, springs or shocks. And the second is that I want to test out this suspension and see what it's like over the bumps and things and see what the car handles like as well. First impressions of the IBAC Pro Spring Kit is it's definitely made the suspension firmer. And I'd say that it's around 10 or 15% firmer, which is significant because the uh, stock suspension on a Z4M is actually quite firm to start with. But what I'll also add to that is 
So whereas before with the stock suspension, it used to be hitting the bumps and it'd really make the car nervous and you'd feel like you're losing traction. The car actually um, feels more composed uh, and you actually feel like you know what it's doing and it feels like it's holding the road. So um, I definitely say that it's improvement over stock, even though the compromise is a little bit firmer ride. So I've chosen a pretty bad road to demo this because I wanted like a worst case scenario for you. So I'm on a back road near where I live and there's quite a lot of repairs to the road and it undulates quite a lot. It pretty much is right up there with worst case scenario. I'm just going down the hill just slightly at the moment and there's a dip at the bottom where a lot of cars bottom out. I'm not going crazy speeds but I'm doing about 50 so I'm not backing off just because there's a dip there. And let's see what it does. Okay, so I just heard the tiniest little bit of tyre rub in the arch, but I think it seemed pretty acceptable really. And regarding the looks of the car, this is what it looked like with the standard wheels and the stock suspension on it. And this is what it looks like now with the new wheels, the lowering springs and the wheel spacers fitted. So in summary, I'm really happy I fitted this um, kit to my car. It's really tightened up the handling and uh, makes the car feel more precise. I'd say don't buy the kit if you're worried about the suspension getting firmer because it's definitely got firmer. And I'd say do buy the kit if you want uh, sharpened up handling and steering and you really want that lower looking stance because um, it's really improved the look of the car as well, I think. I hope that you liked the video and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my content, there should be a couple of videos showing off to the side. Or please consider subscribing to catch my next video. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.